Hello, I'm Jonathan Friedman. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. My paper is Music to Climb by Rising Chromaticism in Max Steiner's Score for King Kong. King Kong culminates with the titular character scaling the Empire State Building and plunging to his death. The scene has captivated audiences both for its thrilling visuals and surprising emotional resonance. Shortly before the film's wide release, a reviewer for The Hollywood Reporter remarked, quote, Even though Kong kills off anything and everything that seeks to intrude on his romance with the beauty, when he is finally killed at the top of the Empire State Building in New York by thousands of bullets from airplane guns, you almost have to choke down a tear for his passing. Robert Friedel attributes the sentiment to Max Steiner's groundbreaking score, quote, Kong's actual fall is accompanied by a sustained blaring dissonant chord and finally resolved by an orchestral outburst. It is interesting that his fall is resolved only by the score and not by the visuals. Equally central to this musical manipulation is the rising chromaticism that follows Kong up the building. This tonal instability sets the tension felt atop the building where the music escalates in dramatic orchestral flourishes followed by nearly two minutes of unscored biplane attacks and finally resolves with Kong's 102-story fall. In the decades since King Kong, numerous film and television composers have used similar rising chromatic lines to heighten anxiety, as characters climb trees, ascend ropes, and scale walls. Genre-spanning examples include Roy Webb's score for Mighty Joe Young, Nelson Riddle's music for the Batman television series, Mark Knopfler's score for The Princess Bride, Lalo Schifrin's music for Rush Hour 2, and Danny Elfman's score for Spider-Man. Given the iconic status of King Kong and Steiner's score, these similarities are not likely coincidental. Rather, it seems that Steiner introduced a durable formula that has proven effective in wide-ranging films where climbing is fraught with suspense. It's difficult to overestimate the cultural impact of King Kong's climactic scene, which pits the eighth wonder of the world against one of the architectural wonders of the modern world. Author Ray Bradbury reminisced, quote, When Kong fell off the Empire State Building, he landed on Ray Harryhausen and me. We haven't been the same since. When Fay Ray, who played Kong's unrequited love interest, Ann Darrow, met Laurence Olivier later in his life, she hoped for a discussion on Shakespeare. But all Olivier wanted to know was how they made Kong climb the Empire State Building. Through the decades, the scene has been imprinted in the popular imagination through all manner of tributes, posters, parodies, toys, models, kitsch, so much so that recognizing it does not require actually seeing the movie. The scene's perpetual presence owes largely to the groundbreaking special effects, which were accomplished in a California studio using miniatures of New York. This could have amounted to cheap thrills or empty action, as is often the case in giant monster films. But Willis O'Brien's masterfully animated beast, accompanied by Steiner's thrilling music, endowed Kong with a tragic dignity akin to the great hero villains of literature and cinema. Kong's Ascent of the Empire State Building combines three compositional techniques found throughout the film. Mickey Mousing, Chromaticism, and Leitmotif. Following a stirring overture and opening credits, the film runs for nearly 25 minutes without musical scoring. The drought ends with the ship nearing Skull Island. 
Shortly after disembarking, the passengers and crew spot natives performing a song and dance ritual as they prepare to offer a young woman as Kong's bride. This jungle dance scene, which comes to represent the islanders, abruptly stops when the chief notices the intruders in the distance. As he descends the ritual platform and approaches the intruders, each step is matched by an intensifying musical sequence consisting of an eight chord descent, the first four following a natural minor scale and the second four falling chromatically. The pattern repeats five times as the chief approaches, each time rising a half or whole step. This dramatic scoring initiates the action-packed remainder of the film, which is scored almost wall to wall. This sequence is one of many examples of Mickey Mousing in King Kong, wherein visual and oral information are synchronized through the mapping of physical movements onto sonic space. Throughout the movie, Steiner mimics the character's ascents and descents with chromatic or mostly chromatic steps moving in like direction. A chromatic ascent accompanies and Daryl as she is taken up to the altar of Kong. When the islanders frantically climb ladders to the top of a wall to see Daryl and Kong, a fast-paced chromatic ascent follows them up. Later in a cave on Skull Island, Kong defeats a giant snake and proceeds to carry Daryl up a rock pathway. Each step receives its own degree on an upward chromatic scale. A similar pattern is synced with the film's male protagonist, John Driscoll, as he climbs up the same rock path to rescue Darrow. As Darrow and Driscoll climb down a vine rope to escape Kong, a steady chromatic descent matches their movement. Kong notices the fleeing pair and pulls them up with a vigorous chromatic ascent. The frightened duo lets go of the rope and falls into the ocean with a quickly descending chromatic line. These musical patterns seem especially appropriate for these scenes, which are rife with tension, anticipation, and uncertainty. To the Western ear, the ambiguity perceived in a sequence of half steps conveys feelings of apprehension. The technique has been exploited since the early period of classical tonality, when ecclesiastical modes gave way to major and minor scales, thus providing the skeleton into which accidentals could be inserted. Chromatic tendencies were expanded during the 19th century with composers adding harmonic dimensions to exploit the inherent impressions of uncertainty and anticipation. Steiner's score is largely built around three leitmotifs. The first is Kong's three-tone descending chromatic theme. Second is a three-note waltz representing Andero. The third is a rapid four-note figure that underscores most of the film's action. These themes are paraphrased and expanded in various compositions throughout the film. To these, we might also add a fourth leitmotif, the chromatic sequences that accompany the film's many ascents and descents. Although these patterns occur in scene-specific iterations, adhering to the principles of Mickey Mousing, 
their repeated association with specific actions suggests a theme in variation. Upward and downward movements on the screen are invariably scored with this fourth motif, thereby reinforcing and dramatizing the moving images. The score for King Kong is remarkably durable. Echoes of Kong's three-note theme are heard in later films featuring sympathetic monsters, such as The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Steiner's successors at RKO, notably Roy Webb, reused bits of King Kong in numerous features and newsreels. Steiner later incorporated sections of his own score in several movies for Warner Brothers. Beyond these and other feats of recycling, King Kong strongly influenced later composers, including Jerry Goldsmith, who said, quote, The techniques developed by Steiner for Kong are basically the same as those we use today. Kong was a model of film scoring, and I'm doing what I'm doing because of it. The music for King Kong is every bit as iconic as the terror gorilla himself. It is therefore no surprise that the film's most imitated scene, the Empire State Building climb, has also attracted musical imitators. Variations of the synchronized chromatic ascent occur in numerous films and television shows involving suspenseful climbs, essentially making it an era and genre-spanning leitmotif, drawing these different scenes together and back to Kong's climb. What follows are examples of this leitmotif from five big and small screen productions. RKO's Mighty Joe Young, which was in many ways a King Kong family reunion, includes scoring by Roy Webb. During the film's climactic burning orphanage scene, protagonist Greg climbs the building on a rope to a synchronized chromatic ascent. Later in the scene, Joe is forced up a burning tree with an orphan in hand, supported by a rising chromatic pattern. There are obvious visual parallels to Kong holding and Darrow in climbing the Empire State Building, and the musical similarities are equally clear. Considering Webb's well-documented tendency to borrow from Steiner, the climbing motif seems to be a direct nod to King Kong. Among the most memorable segments of the delightfully campy Batman television series involve the Cape Crusaders scaling Gotham City buildings on ropes. The segment appears in 14 episodes as well as Batman the movie, each time featuring a window encounter with celebrities. Nelson Riddle underscored the wall climbing shtick with a chromatic sequence reminiscent of Kong's climb, a connection reinforced by the occasional placement of an Empire State Building-like skyscraper in the background. Given the show's penchant for pop culture references, this seems to be a deliberate musical tribute. Gee whiz, Batman. Dropping in on a drugstore might have been easier. Exercise never hurt anyone, Robin. We must always keep the element of surprise on our side. What are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. Pursuing the enemies of law and order wherever they happen to be. Aren't you in the wrong city? On special assignment for the Daily Sentinel. You know my aide, Cato? Robin, the boy wonder. Well, I don't want to hold you up from your crime fighting. Thank you, and good luck to you, Mr. Hornet. Nice to have met you. Gosh, Batman, what are they dressed like that for? In the 1987 film The Princess Bride, the giant Fezzik climbs the Cliffs of Insanity on a rope with three people strapped to his body as the dread pirate Roberts follows behind. Mark Knopfler scored the climb with a gradual chromatic ascent. Unlike the previous examples, Knopfler's music does not include a steady stepwise movement up a chromatic scale, but is presented more abstractly with resets and fits and starts. These choices serve to elongate and vary the scoring since the climb is much longer, 
as well as to emphasize the scene's precarious nature. He's climbing the rope. And he's gaining on us. Inconceivable. Faster! I thought I was going faster. You were supposed to be this colossus. You were this great legendary thing, and yet he gains. Well, I'm carrying three people, and he got only himself. I do not accept excuses. I'm just going to have to find myself a new giant, that's all. Don't say that, Vincini, please. The music does not necessarily exhibit Steiner's direct influence, but suggests that by the 1980s, the climbing motif had become such a fixture that it could be taken in new directions without losing its likely basis in the source material. Lalo Schifrin's music for Rush Hour 2 brings the climbing motif into the 21st century. A brief scene shows Chief Inspector Lee chasing bad guys up a Hong Kong building that's surrounded by bamboo scaffolding. Beneath the frenzied orchestral flourishes is a brassy chromatic figure recalling Kong's ascent, albeit in a quicker tempo to sync with the action on screen. The combination of a building climb, Mickey Mousing, and heavy brass can be heard as an homage. A more direct quotation occurs in Spider-Man, scored by Danny Elfman. When Peter Parker begins his first spider-like wall climb, each hand movement is matched by a brassy ascent up a chromatic scale. As Parker gains confidence and realizes his great power, which, of course, comes with great responsibility, arpeggiated figures are added to the chromatic underpinning. According to at least one source, Steiner is Elfman's favorite composer, and virtually all of Elfman's scores are influenced by Golden Age film composers. King Kong's famous Empire State building scene has left a lasting impression on both filmmakers and the public at large. Its tension-laden musical accompaniment built on an uncertain chromatic foundation likewise continues to resonate. The blend of Mickey Mousing and rising chromaticism reoccurs in numerous later films and television sequences, each of which seem to be linked directly or indirectly to Steiner's landmark score. In productions across decades and genres, composers have used variations of the climbing motif to add suspense and anticipation. With King Kong, Steiner gave us the perfect music to climb by. Thank you.